What's up YouTube, it's the Pack Life here and we're back with another video. So this video is going to be a little bit different from um, the normal videos that I upload, you know, with pack breaks and pickups. Um, it's kind of a pickup video, but it's a little bit different in the sense that um, this is a new series that I wanted to create called Low Risk, High Reward. It's um, basically going to be a series where we kind of prospect players, you know, under the radar players that you know you can pick up cards for cheap and hopefully um, they can have a breakout season um, a little bit afterwards so you can kind of benefit you know if you don't PC the player you could sell off the cards and potentially build up your collection just based off of profits that you make just by following you know trends and um, being ahead of the game a little bit so for this first episode and believe me I've been dying to do an episode like this for a very long time it's just i didn't really have the player in mind that um you know would be a good way to jump start this series but um as i hinted to last week i kind of um finally figured out who i wanted to begin the series with and um that player is gonna be dennis smith jr now, Dennis Smith Jr. as the first test subject is kind of unique because he's not really an under-the-radar type of player. A lot of people are, are aware of um, the potential he has, the athleticism, the skill set that he has. Um, if you've followed Dennis Smith Jr. for the past couple of years, you've known that he's been a stud since high school. I mean, all you have to do is go on YouTube, type in his name, and you'll see the crazy mixtapes that he put up in high school. And you'll see, you know, some of his college highlights. You'll see even um, that at Dallas, he was pretty much offensive force. Um, the only downside, in my opinion, to his career is that, like I said before, he's played on awful teams. So, you know, if you play on awful teams, it's kind of hard to get the um, notoriety and the publicity as um you know being a superstar in the NBA because nobody's really paying attention um you know I'd say Luka Doncic was the um he's the outlier in that situation simply because of the way he just dominated um the NBA individually with you know the kind of numbers he put up but um it's not many players who like I said will, will get um you know the notoriety if they don't um produce wins and are um, really effective in the NBA. So that's why I believe that, you know, for this first episode, um, to me, it's a great opportunity, you know, to kind of showcase um, what I believe with Dennis Smith Jr. Um, as of right now, if you don't know, like his cards, his collectability in the hobby is, is extremely low. Um, from what I've seen, you know, just by end it and, you know, um, sold listings and stuff that has um, been listed on eBay. His cards are extremely cheap. Now it, it's understandable, you know. He um, to to people who aren't really, you know, that deep into the game of basketball, you'll see he's kind of like a um, sort of a um, you know who only cares about his individual stats and this and that. But if, in my opinion, my honest opinion, and I've watched um, a lot of Dennis Smith Jr., especially in the past. Um, couple months or so he is a he's more than just a one-trick pony you know you see the dunks you see the highlight plays but if you look deeper and you you know you really study um his play style you'll see that he's an you know he's an amazing passer um he makes the smart basketball play he's pretty good on defense and um he can shoot the ball you know, um, despite his athle um, athleticism, that that guy he has a pretty nice touch. Um, whether it's a mid range or a three point shot, he, he's um, yeah, he, he's pretty good in my opinion. So um, that that's really why I kind of gravitated towards collecting his cards. I, I believe now is the perfect time, and I'm gonna show you in the last um, week or so the cards that I picked up of his. Just just to prove a point, I'm not just um, I'm not just gonna tout this guy and not invest you know my own money into this. And um, what, what's amazing about these cards that I picked up is I spent no more than $90 on all of it. So um, as I showed you before, this is the first card I picked up. You know, all of these are rookie cards. Um, I believe that, you know, if you're going to invest in a player, 
Um, you know, their best cards obviously are going to be their rookie cards. I mean, short prints are good, but, you know, if you want to get the most value out of a player that you invest in, just go for the rookie cards, you know. Um, and the autos. Autos are cool, too. But, yeah, so in my last video, this is what I showed you, the cornerstones. Um, I just like the look of this card. Pretty awesome card. Um, the moment I picked this card up, I, you know, I, I like this card so much that I started to um, shop for other cards of his. And, um, yeah, so when we, you know... A, a couple years from now, when we look back at this video, you'll see that this is the one that started it all for me. Hopefully, hopefully he has he has a successful career in the process, and we all benefit from this video. But yeah, so this is the first card, Cornerstones, from last year, 2017-2018, um, his rookie year. And then that started off a chain reaction and made me just um, start trying to PC his cards. So this was the second card, Kaboom, um, short print. This is out of Crown Royale, I think. And um, yeah, I, I won this on auction for about, I believe like $17, 18 bucks. Um, yeah, but you know, when he was super hyped up, this was easily like an 80 to $100 card. So that's that's what I'm saying, you know, how much he's fallen off um, as a PC guy. I was able to snag this for $18 and I, I'm extremely happy about it. So yeah, the Cornerstones was about um, 35 bucks for 35 40 bucks. This was 18. So we're at 68 dollars with these two cards um, the next card um, Red Cracked ice collegiate NC State. Um, this one's a I think a variation two or something um, This is a super short print. This is numbered out of 23. I got 12 out of 23 um, I was able to get this for um, I think 35 dollars um, yeah, and um, I, I got extremely lucky about this. I got hooked up on this, so um, that that actually helped with the um, money that I've invested so far. If you look on eBay, this is about a people have this listed upwards of seventy five to one hundred fifty to um, even three hundred. And yeah, this you know you just sometimes when trying to PC guys, um, you get lucky. And in this instance, I got lucky. So um, out of these three cards so far, we're looking at thirty five. 18 and um, about 40 so we're looking at 58 plus 35 that's about 93 yeah my bad that's 93 so I spent under a hundred on these cards so far so this is about 93 bucks um, for all three of these cards you know that's you know you if you would tell me three years ago, you know, or two years ago when he just got into the league, that you would get these three short prints for under a hundred bucks. You know, I, I'd tell you you're crazy. But yeah, I mean, this is this is how much people have given up on PCing Dennis um, Smith Jr. And then here's a, here's one that's less, you know, the um, a little, kind of a lower end. I, I got this for five dollars, you know. Um, I say five dollars, but this was actually a throw into other cards I got. They just threw it in there, and so I guess I'll just value this at about five bucks. So this is about ninety. Um, everything combined, we're looking at about ninety-eight bucks. And then um, these were just pulled out of packs. Um, I, I had these for a while, so I wouldn't even consider these pickups. I just had these in the PC. I um, didn't know what to do with them, but now, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on them. So yeah, this is pretty much. Um, that you know, that's all the info that I could divulge for now. Um. A couple more things that he has working for himself. New York, the New York Knicks, they kind of have a revamped roster. So it's like, um, even though they didn't sign the big name free agents that they, you know, they, they had set themselves up to, um, you know, to sign during the offseason, they picked up some pretty solid players, which in my my opinion can um, will do nothing but elevate, um, you know, their record, the style style of play and you know overall just their their morale as a team you know it'd be um i wouldn't be surprised if they could sneak into the um you know playoffs as an eight seed you know the east relatively is is kind of always um it's always it's not necessarily weak but it's always up in the air who makes it in the east i mean i know when lebron played it was he was always a solid lock but you know aside from lebron in the east it was always um you just never knew who was going to make it it was always just um you know, up in the air every every season. So, you know, with the new players that they picked up, you know, as, as well as um, the players that they drafted, um, I, I just, I kind of just, in my in my opinion, I, I just think that they can actually 
um, make the playoffs this year. But, you know, that, that that's still, you know, they still have to play the game. They still have to play the season out. But, you know, that's just my opinion. My only concern is um, what they plan on doing with Smith Jr. since they drafted R.J. Barrett. I mean, R.J. Barrett is a dominant ball handler. And um, Dennis Smith Jr. is the point guard of the team. Um but honestly, if I had to choose, like if I was a GM and, I, you know, I'm not a GM, so it's not that difficult of a choice for me. But I, I would, you know, I would start Dennis Smith Jr. I mean, I, honestly, I just, I don't know. I, I just think he has more to offer um, this team right now and have R.J. Barrett. Maybe even R.J. Barrett can still start, but, you know, he just play a different position like small forward or shooting guard or something. But, you know, they have um, so many players on the Knicks rosters that they could kind of just, you know, rotate different starters every single game until they find the right, the right, um, the right group of guys. But you know, that that's it. And, um, a couple other things too, is like I said before, Dennis Smith Jr. is only 21 years old. So, um, there's rookies in the NBA who are older than that. And, um, you know, 21 is not even nowhere near your prime. It's kind of like just really starting your career. And Dennis Smith, um, has two years under his belt already so it's like he's kind of the same age as a rookie but he's he's also a, you know a veteran and another thing is um players coming into their third seasons is usually when they finally figure it all out and understand what they have to do to be successful and this is dennis smith jr's third season um if you own dennis smith jr cards it's it's it would be a terrible idea to sell the cards but as far as um holding them if you got them for cheap, I would suggest holding them for the next two to three years and just see where it goes. You know, um, you can't go wrong, man, because right now, I believe, is the lowest point of his cards. I don't think um, his cards will get any lower than they are now. I mean, if you look on eBay, you can catch SIGs for like $10. You can catch RPAs, not not really the high-end RPAs, but you can catch RPAs for like 20 30 uh, 40 bucks. So, you know, even though um, I'm giving you guys advice, you know, even if I end up wrong, it's it's you know the advice I'm giving you and the players that I'm telling you to invest in are extremely cheap. So you know um, I apologize in advance if I end up being wrong in this scenario, but at the same time you know I, I did a lot of research to make sure that we don't invest that much money and it doesn't affect us that much if it doesn't turn out the way we want it to. So um, yeah man I hope you enjoyed this video. I apologize for it being so long. Um, like I said I'm, I'm just extremely passionate about this series. Um, I, I have plans to continue it. Um, I'll try to do as many as I can and I'll try to improve every single time I put up a new episode. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. This is the pack life. Um, I also hope you had a wonderful day and I'll just catch you on the next one. Peace.